My name's Dudley. As you remember, I'm an angel. The angel Dudley? Ding! That must have been that part of the Bible that got lost. Now, I haven't seen this movie since probably the early 2000s. I'm not even gonna lie, but since this movie was highly requested, you know I had to do it. And thanks to y'all, I've realized, or I guess remembered, just how good this movie's soundtrack was. I miss soundtracks. But while watching this movie, I noticed so many things, and now it's time to talk about it. So let's get into it. The movie opens up to us seeing one of our main characters, Julia, leading the choir. We also meet her son, Jeremiah, her husband, Reverend Henry, who looks very stressed, and also her mother, Marguerite. And yes, Miss Jennifer is playing somebody's mama yet again. But in her defense, she does it quite well. But as Henry is preaching, Julia and her mama notice that this sermon sounds very familiar. So Julia tries to help Henry out by adding a little razzle dazzle. He knows you're tired. That's why he says, lean on me. And it's safe to say that Henry did not want the extra help. He knows you're tempted. After church, the family heads off and it's here where we get the cutest narration ever from Jeremiah. He's slowly getting into, in his words, his not made up story. Jeremiah begs his parents to take him over his best friend Hakeem's house so they can hang out. They refuse at first, but since they know something that Jeremiah doesn't know yet, and we'll get into that in a little bit, they decide to take him over there anyway. We go back to the family home where Marguerite is getting Sunday dinner together. We learn that Hakeem was abandoned by his mother and is currently in the care of his grandmother. And if things couldn't get any harder for him, CPS is coming to take him in a few days. Meanwhile, the youth center is closing for good today and Henry plans to go by and say farewell to the kids. It's a lot going on, it seems, and it's weighing heavy on Henry. Marguerite can see this, but Julia is in complete denial, or she just doesn't want her mother in her business. Well, somebody just better get their house in order. That's all I know. Okay. I'm looking at you. You can look at me from behind. Don't be talking to me about your behind. I gave you that behind. Henry is upstairs and talking with the man above. He asks for help since he's overwhelmed with everything. Little did he know, help was on the way. Literally, and pretty fast too. Enter our other main character, Dudley. Dudley is an angel sent from the heavens to help Henry with whatever he needs. And Dudley couldn't believe his luck. He was too happy. But we go to Henry who breaks the bad news to the kids who are super disappointed. We see a familiar face as well. But anyway, Dudley pops up out the blue and introduces himself to Henry who doesn't take him seriously at all. No, I'm here in answer to your request. A request. To help? This is some kind of joke? Uh, no. No, no, he doesn't make jokes. He? Safe to say, Henry did not have time for the games that day and quickly went about his way. Dudley went on to enjoy the things he's missed out on since leaving Earthside, like this pizza. Fresh out the oven. You hey, don't that cheese burn the roof of your mouth? Um child and then Dudley asks him about Henry not knowing the rank that Henry holds around the neighborhood and he gets put in his place he baptized all five of my kids all five of them here give me this wait don't get wait, on out no, of here I didn't mean it get on out of here I just and don't come back now where did Dudley get this money from does heaven provide a stipend to the angels or something let me know but later on that night Julia tells Jeremiah about Hakeem he's gonna miss his best friend he soon goes to sleep though, and check out the Lion King bed set. We are abruptly taken to a robbery scene where we see a neighborhood kid, Billy, hiding behind a car. The robbers run out of the building. One of them gets close to the car, drops the gun, and runs away. And it ends up being a situation of wrong place, wrong time, and mistaken identity because the store owner mistakes him for one of the robbers and he gets arrested. 
Sometime after, Henry comes to the police station to check on him and his family and promises to help them out. As he's leaving, he's unable to start his car and again, he asks for help from the man above and Dudley appears to assist. Dudley, again, <laughs> tells Henry that he's an angel sent to help him and Henry, again, doesn't believe, though this time he decides to humor him a little. My name's Dudley, as you remember, I'm an angel. The angel Dudley? Ding! That must have been that part of the Bible that got lost. Dudley asks Henry for a ride and Henry agrees to out of the goodness of his heart and Dudley pulls out the angel handbook like he said he would and tells Henry the rules he, as an angel here to assist, must follow. Rule number one, Dudley can't do anything that Henry should be doing. Rule number two, everything Henry does has to be of his own free will. And the final rule is that once Dudley is done with his mission, Henry will have no memory of him. As Dudley exits the car, Henry suggests that if he needs anything to come see him and as he shakes his hand, he feels something. A higher power, I guess would be a, a better term, but Henry quickly shakes it off and goes about his business. We go to Julia holding choir practice. Is it just me or like the old school gospel or even 90s gospel just does it for me? This new gospel don't feel the same. <laughs> They're missing that good old Kojic vibrato or something. I'm not sure. But Whitney's mother makes a cameo in this film as well, which I thought was really cute. Yeah, we've always done it like this. Why all of a sudden are you changing? And let nothing, nothing, nothing separate you from you. Who do you think, Mrs. Abigail? Except. As the choir continues to practice, we see the boiler in the basement fighting for its life. We go to Henry, who's made it home just in time to see this commercial playing. The guy in this commercial, Joe Hamilton, recently reached out to him to attend a meeting. Marguerite doesn't see it for Joe and tries to warn Henry, but Henry suggested that she mind her business. Meanwhile, that boiler has called it quits and sent everyone running out of the church. The boiler is through and is yet another thing that's been placed on Henry's heavy plate. Later on, Henry complains to Julia about everything going on and how he feels defeated. When Julia tries to offer some advice, Henry shuts her down and we start to see the cracks in their relationship. The next morning, things are awkward. Their assistant, Beverly, brings them the mail but quickly exits once she notices that the vibes were off. Julia's mom hears the phone ringing and tries to multitask by trying to listen to Julia and Henry's convo and whoever was on the other end of that phone, but fails. That is not fair. Girl, I'm trying to listen. Anyway, Marguerite tells him that they have bumped up Billy's hearing and so now Henry has to rush out of there and he won't be home till later in the day due to his meeting with Joe Hamilton. Julia didn't like that, and she didn't like her mother trying to meddle in their business either. You ready to talk about this, little girl? I think things are looking up for us. There goes that behind again. As Beverly goes into her office to start the day, she runs into Dudley. Dudley mentions that he's the new assistant and sends Beverly spiraling, thinking she's gonna get fired. Look, mister, I have kids, okay? They're growing like weeds, and if you think I get a penny from that man in Cleveland, when well, you got another thought coming, I can't take this, being fired. So, then we go to Henry at Billy's hearing. They don't even give Henry the chance to speak up for him. Instead, they rush him off to jail and rush his family out of the court. We go back to the house where, sadly, it's time for Hakeem to leave. Jeremiah was so sweet. He sent him off with plenty of treats just in case, in his words, they starved him. That little boy must have been terrified to leave everything he's ever known. But Jeremiah is understandably sad about this, and this even gets to Dudley as he watches from the window. After Jeremiah runs into his room, Julia finally meets Dudley, and Dudley quickly lies about how he ended up there. And this works out for him, especially after he flatters Marguerite. And as they're talking, Dudley heads upstairs to talk to her. Child, you a little too comfortable going to people's rooms. He would have got cussed out real quick, <laughs> but he's able to cheer him up, telling him that when God takes someone away from us, he leaves the parts of them that were most important to us. Julia looks on and appreciates Dudley cheering him up. Quick question, do you want to feel really old right now? 
Sometime later, Henry finally gets in and sees Dudley. Safe to say, he was the last person he was trying to see, but Dudley lets him know that he gave Beverly the day off to do some Christmas shopping and spend some time with the kids. Gave his assistant the day off. A mess. But Dudley tries to convince Henry that he has more important problems, but before he can get into that... I think he's starting to believe him now. <laughs> but Henry tells Julia about Billy, which makes her upset, and Julia reminds him that he promised to take Jeremiah shopping later. And then Dudley reminds him that he has a meeting later with Joe Hamilton as well. So Mr. Henry is real booked and busy. As they arrive at the building where the meeting with Joe will take place, Dudley uses his charm to flatter the receptionist. This further irritates Henry, who simply wants Dudley to disappear. He insisted that Dudley not come into the meeting room. Henry was definitely on one that day. We're well, still not going in here. Out. Rule number two. And in case you forgot, rule number two states that everything Henry does has to be of his own free will. When the meeting starts, Henry notices some familiar faces in the room. Faces from his own church have chosen to link up with Joe behind his back. They agree with Joe that this cold, see-through model of what Joe dreams for the church to be is the right choice, while Henry just wants to replace the boiler in the current church and keep everything the way it is. Joe remains persistent, and you can slowly see Henry leaning into what everybody else wants him to do. Meanwhile, Julia is holding practice with the kids. This was a really cute scene as well. Later on, Julia and Dudley head out with Jeremiah. While they were waiting for Henry to meet them and take Jeremiah shopping like he promised, Dudley and Julia talk and get to know each other better. Apparently, Julia and Henry have known each other since they were toddlers and have dated throughout their lives. Henry finally meets up with Julia to take Jeremiah shopping, and he's so in a rush that he completely ignores his wife's questions, causing Dudley to get his attention and revert it back to his wife. He urges Henry to talk to his wife and offers to take Jeremiah shopping instead. Now, Henry has to break the harsh news to Julia that he's decided to accept Joe Hamilton's offer. Child, he goes on about how there were members of the church there and how they were basically blackmailing him to do it. And he excitedly tells her that a new boiler will be installed the next day. But Julia could have cared less. Him, he bought you for a boiler. Shh, Julia. Julia, let me show you something. Henry goes on to say that he's been trying to make things work for the church and their community for eight years and nothing seems to be working. But he doesn't seem to understand that he's made these decisions without consulting Julia since, you know, it was her dad's church and all that he trusted you with. So you give up our lives without even talking to me, Henry? All right, all right, your father was a saint and I'm not, but I'm here, Julia, and he isn't. And Julia is understandably upset and just wants to leave, but Henry resists until he gets some good advice from this guy. Excuse me, would you kind of give her the keys? I have customers in here. Later on, Dudley helps Julia get a Christmas tree. When she pricks her finger, he asks to look at it and offers to read her palms. She obliges and he tells her this. I see a beautiful woman with a good heart only has to open her eyes to realize that everything she ever wanted, she already has. When Julia suggests that maybe the fire is going out between her and Henry, Dudley suggests that her and Henry go dancing. Child, Dudley sets up this whole date and unfortunately, Henry was the last person to know. Henry goes on about how he has to go here, be there for this person, that person. Henry was upset. <laughs> Once again, I'm gonna look like the bad guy. Not if you go, all right, you can help by taking her. Me? This guy just told another guy to take his wife dancing. I just, this dude shows up for everybody and everything but his wife. It's sad to see, but Dudley breaks the news to Julia and offers to take her out if she's down. And she was, so they go to a nightclub and Dudley's able to let loose. He had no rhythm. I guess that didn't come down with him from heaven. An old friend of Julia's recognizes her and comes over to greet her. While they're catching up, Dudley learns that this was the same club where Henry proposed to Julia and Julia used to sing at the club as well. Brislow urges Julia to sing and he basically drags her up on the stage and she sings, I Believe in You and Me, one of my favorite Whitney songs. 
Fun fact, I sung this at my cousin's wedding back in 04. Those were the days. But anyway, Dudley is mesmerized by Julia's voice and officially knows what love sounds like. But back at the ranch, Henry is hanging out with Jeremiah and Marguerite. Jeremiah asks Henry what he's getting his mom for Christmas and Henry says he doesn't know and asks for Jeremiah's suggestion. And Jeremiah spills some tea. I think she'd like to go to bed. Excuse me, young man. She was looking at the light in the store window with Dudley. Was she not? Now, he wants to pay attention. But soon after, Julia and Henry finally make it home and Henry was sitting there in the dark waiting for them. He learns that Dudley took her to the same club where he proposed and he was pissed about it. Dudley realizes that Henry doesn't believe in anything anymore, himself, the church, or Billy. Dudley asks him if he ever looked Billy in the eye and asked if he did it. And child, you know he couldn't find the time to do that. And then to justify his lack of effort, Henry brings up the fact that Billy doesn't even go to church. Like, why does that matter? What does that have to do with anything? But Dudley tells Henry what he has yet to realize on his own. Your wife feels like she's in a marriage by herself. Your son lost his best friend. What are you doing about that, Henry? You don't have to listen to me. You're right. But you ought to listen to them. The next day, Henry goes to see Billy and takes Dudley's advice and looks him in the eyes and asks him if he did it and that's all it took. Bursts through the courtroom and bargains with the judge. Basically, the judge trusted the word of the victim over the evidence which included an ATM receipt stamped with the time the robbery happened. He can't be at two places at the same time. And the fact that he was just standing there and his prints weren't on the gun. Henry calls for the judge to reconsider, which she eventually does, and he gains back his confidence. Billy isn't charged with the robbery and returns back to his family. This serves as a win for Henry, and for him. This win meant everything. We go to Dudley, Jeremiah, and Julia ice skating, and as they're getting all cute and slightly flirty on the ice, one of my fave songs from the soundtrack play in the background. Child, I forgot all about this song, but when I heard it, I recited all the lyrics. I've been listening to it all week. But anyway, as Dudley and Jeremiah do that, Henry is getting stopped by all the lights. Dudley is working his magic and getting a little too wrapped up in his angelic duties. He's slowly breaking rule number one. Sometime later, Julia, Jeremiah, and Dudley make it home, and when Marguerite asks them did they have a good time, she senses something is up between Julia and Dudley. You had a good time? Yeah. Oh my lord. Marguerite pulls Julia to the side and reminds her that she's a married woman and that Henry can't be 10 places at once. But honestly, the one place they should all count on him being at is home with his family. <laughs> when Henry makes it home, he tells Julia the good news that Billy is home now and his charges were dropped. Jeremiah drops some tea again by telling Henry that Dudley taught him how to skate. Now he's in his feelings again. I'm taking a lunch. Well, you were late, Henry. Take her to Jazzy's. You asked me to take her skating. Keep the hell away from her. Dudley plays ignorant, but he slips up a bit. Now, I've seen the way she looks at you. Really? I mean, really. And Henry gets so mad that he throws Dudley's angel handbook in the fire. Now, why did he do that? Wait a minute. Hey, Henry, take the car! They made such a fuss that Julia tries to break them up, and when Dudley suggests asking what Julia thinks, Henry says this. Is that what you want, Julia? It isn't a question of what she wants. See, that's the problem. <laughs> Julia leaves out, and they continue fussing, and Marguerite overhears this and decides to speak with Dudley for herself. She tells him that even though she doesn't pry in other folks' business, and that's a lie. As she pulls out another cigarette, Dudley insists that he can't leave because he hasn't gotten through to Henry. But Marguerite says this. 
She's Henry's wife. And Dudley, you are a charming person. You go charm somebody else. I kind of feel like Marguerite was so worried about Julia being the upstanding wife and not looking at the fact that she wasn't being fulfilled or prioritized. She deserved that much, but we'll get to that later. But Marguerite has said all she needed to say, and when she's done, she fibs again without a thought. Did I tell you I quit smoking? Later on, Julia and Henry head out to deliver some things to a member of the congregation. They end up arguing a bit when Julia suggests that Henry's jealous. He denies it, of course, but their agitation quickly goes away when Henry falls while he's bringing some goodies to this doorstep, and this lightens the mood between the two. Julia even has jokes. She wasn't that bad. The Henry, policeman, walk down the street, see your mom, and go, break it up! Henry mentions that it's good to see Julia laugh again, and she mentions that it's nice to have a reason to. Henry appears to take this all in. The next day, Henry pays a visit to Joe Hamilton to let him know that he's having second thoughts about the plans that he's agreed to. He learns that the deacons of the church came to Joe complaining about how broke the church was, so he became a trustee of the church, bought the mortgage, and basically has the upper hand on choosing if the church gets knocked down or not. Henry is shocked and disappointed at this news and who he considered an old friend. Sometime later, Henry goes back to the house and delivers a much needed and appreciated present to Jeremiah, which was Hakeem. I bet they were so excited. Meanwhile, Henry is having a hard time coming up with his sermon. As he steps away, Julia takes a peek. As she reads, she finds out the fate of the church. Again, not from her husband's mouth. Dudley is strolling around aimlessly, sifting through his complicated feelings and finds himself in front of Joe Hamilton's home. He ends up spooking the hell out of him when he gets up from the piano and to Joe's shock, the piano keeps playing. Now, Joe claims that none of this gets to him, but judging by how fast he gulped down his liquor, I would say that was a lie. But Dudley has stirred up the guilt in him and now Joe's having second thoughts. The next day, Dudley pays his last visit to Julia and gives her much needed advice. You remember when you asked me what you do when the flame between two people goes out? The answer is, don't let it. I truly believe they would have been together if she would have met him before he died and before she married Henry. They definitely had strong chemistry and she was definitely going to risk it all for him. Maybe her mother was right to step in. But this sweet moment is interrupted by one of the kids who offloads a wet baby doll. She wasn't having that that day. But Julia says goodbye to Henry and takes over old girl's spot. And this chick took her job real seriously. But Henry starts his sermon and it was soon after that this same chick realized he went rogue and this was not going to be the sermon that they planned for. But this sermon was needed because it truly came from the heart and connects with the congregation. As Dudley exits the church, he knows that his job is done here on earth. So he goes to Julia and Henry's home for the last time and has a little fun. Sorry. Child. Dudley goes back to the church to greet Julia and Henry, and of course, they don't recognize him since his job is complete, but Jeremiah does. I guess as he gets older, this memory will go away on its own. But we learned that Hakeem came to live with them for good, and things got better for their family, the church, and their community. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. Child, not Julia having an emotional affair with an angel. <laughs> Dudley was willing to risk his good standing with the Lord. But anyway, let's take it from the top. Henry was losing faith in himself and he faced setback after setback. The church going broke, the boiler issue, the youth center closing. He felt like what he was doing wasn't good enough. He even started to lose faith in God. When he first asked for help in his prayer, he specifically said, if you really exist, can you send me help? And Henry had a hard time prioritizing his family. He could be there for this member of the church, that member, this guy down the street. No matter who they were, whatever they had going on was always more important than his family. He was simply going through the motions, doing things that in his mind he should be doing without realizing the more important important things he was sacrificing. 
Henry had a habit of ignoring Julia and not including her in things, which is crazy because that was her dad's church. So if anybody should have been aware of anything surrounding it, it should have been her. Anytime she tried to give her input or anytime she asked questions, he would immediately shut her down and out, causing separation between the two. And then you had Marguerite in Julia's ear telling her that Henry couldn't be at 10 places at the same time. In a way saying, this is what you should accept. But this dude was present for everyone else but his family. And that's not something you just accept to be the last thing on someone's priority list. And Henry was so stubborn. He didn't want to listen to Dudley at all. This man had a handsome angel take his wife out dancing and didn't think twice about it until she came home and he learned that she actually had a good time. He never considered that Billy could be innocent until Dudley suggested that he simply ax him. He refused to let Dudley in the meeting and ended up getting pushed into Joe Hamilton's plan. Henry was so difficult. But one thing that I noticed that I didn't before in my younger years is the complicated feelings that Dudley had. He died young and while working with Henry and Julia, specifically Julia, he started to see what he missed out on. He never got to experience love, going out dancing, having a family, none of that. Dudley was steadily breaking rule number one. And I don't even think he did it intentionally at first. I think he just got caught up and Julia did too. Her and Dudley had amazing chemistry and he gave her what she needed at the time. Attention, quality time, conversation, things Henry couldn't find the time to give her or their son. Though Marguerite was a meddler, I think she stepped in just in time. Julia was bound to risk it all eventually and by forcing Dudley to step away, Julia and Henry were finally able to come together and Henry was able to regain his faith and confidence to turn things around. Anyway, thanks for watching per usual. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. As for the next review, all I'm gonna say is 2016, and again, Black Hollywood faves, including an Oscar winner, and this movie is similar to another Christmas movie we've done, but with a little razzle dazzle. Yeah, I don't think I need to say anything else. <laughs> Bye! Oh,